Hey everyone, welcome back to the Power Baseball League. So we have just finished, we did data import a few weeks ago, and then we've been working with forms processing and seeing how we can use that to get handwritten data into our system. And then if you'll remember a few weeks back, if we can even remember back that long, <laughs> we had a great conversation with Megan B. Walker about Dynamics 365 customer voice and the forms that we can build in there to allow our users or our parents and families to enter their data in, in a web form. So today, Malcolm's gonna show us a web form he built and tell us a little bit about customer voice. And then we're gonna look at how that data comes into the common data service. Perfect, so my video has been pretty choppy on here this week, so I'm not sure what's going on, but hopefully it's not too painful to watch, but that's okay, because you're gonna watch my screen most mostly. So let me just pull that up. Okay, so we should have my screen pulled up and we're ready to go. So where we're going, what we've already done is we've already started to frame this out in customer voice, which for the record was uh, super cool because I had never used that. I had used forms and the forms pro and all that stuff before had never used customer voice. So pretty straightforward. Um, it, it's very much similar look and feel to the forms um, experience. Uh, there was a couple of things that I want to touch on really quickly, um, but we did find a gap. We want to add a phone number in here. So we've already got this survey built out and that we just found that one field that we want to add. I want to show you some of the branching. I want to rename the survey and then we'll hand it back over because I think at that point we're ready for a test. So what we've got is we built out some sections. And if you remember that video with uh, Megan V. Walker, um, she talked about having different sections in the video. So we did just that. We have a, a first section that somebody will see. This is really the parent's first name, last name, their email address. This is where I want to add in a phone number. So I'm just going to click into any one of these and create a new one. I can make it a, a text field. And what you'll notice is it's just pretty straightforward. If you use Forms Pro, not name, sorry, we want phone number like that. Um, same look and feel. We have the the ability to make things required and and whatnot. Whether it's a long answer or not, it gives them more space and that kind of stuff. So this is all we want to do is add that. What I want to show really quickly that I should have shown when I clicked that button is when I click Add New, it actually the AI is going to start recommending things that you might want to add, which is really, really slick. So when we first started this, first name, last name, email address actually all came up on the list automatically. So I was just like, click, 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 and boom, they were added and they were in there, which is really, really handy. So in this one, I actually don't want to add any more. I'm happy with this selection. Uh, we've now got, uh, we've also got a question for how many youth are being registered. You'll recall back to that video, we also wanted to pick and we, we set the number just to four you know, we, we didn't want to go much beyond that. Each one of those then corresponds with a section. So youth one participant information, and we're keeping it super straightforward. First name, last name, date of birth. That's it. And um, that's all we need to get them into our system and registered. Um, we've got section two or three, which is youth two, youth three, and youth four. And then that's the end of the survey. We say thank you. And the little closure note uh, in terms of where they go afterwards says, you know, thanks. Somebody will be in touch after we input your registration. I wanted to touch really quickly on the branching because branching in here, this is probably what blew me away the most around customer voice is the ability to give you not just a static, like if somebody says option A, go to question six. If they say option B, go to question seven. This allows us to build in layers of your rules, which is really, really handy because in this specific example, we wanted to actually look back at two different things, right? We want to say if they answered this last question, so we know that that's youth one, there's first name, last name, and date of birth. So if they've answered that question and they said that there were two youth, then we want to go to the second one. Otherwise, go to the end of the survey because that means the parent's done, right? It means that they picked um, one. And so we were able to build that out for each layer. And so when we go through and we've got a test to make sure it works, but what should be happening is if a parent picks one, then they input one child, end of the survey. If they said two, when they get to the end of the entry of the first child, it should then bring them to page two for the second child, then to the end of the survey and three and four. So I think we should test all of those out, Kylie, um, when we get to that stage, just to make sure that everything's working properly. The only other thing I want to point out is you'll notice when we created a new one, it came up as survey one. So let's just change this name 
So I'm going to pick rename and we'll call this, uh, what should we call it? PBL enrollment. We'll call it youth, youth enrollment. That sounds good. And there's a little big bit debate. different than your title, right? So we can keep yeah. it, keep it different. Big debate over there's two L's or one L enrollment, and I still don't know the answer to that. So we're going to go with two. So I think we're all ready. I think that that's saved. We just see the message up here. Everything is, oh, that says deleted. That's from before. <laughs> uh, so we're all good to go. It's all saved. Kylie, why don't I hand it back to you and we give it a test? Excellent. Okay, excellent. So here I am on the survey and um, I wanted, I did one thing. I put this in like an incognito whatever browser because one thing you can do is you can control who has access to the survey. So in this one, we're letting anybody do it and it's keeping it anonymous, but we do have the ability if we wanted to lock it down to like only users in your organization or things like that. But we don't want to do that because um, that's not real life. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start filling this out. So um, Julie Jones, I was watching Julie and the Phantoms this week, so I can't <laughs> remember the names of all the people. I'll make them the kids. I guess that's weird. OK. Test.com, right? OK, we have her phone number that we just added. Five, five, five. <laughs> yes, and we want you said you want her to have four kids. Well, yeah, I think we should just I think we should actually test all of it. But for this video, let's go with four because that should let's bring us through four. each section. All right. So Tom Thomerson. All right. OK, we got to number two. Um, Robert. Roman. Since this is a made up child, I guess I don't need to spell their names correctly. Nah, so <laughs> nervous. Next. I know. Oh, three. Three. Okay, it worked. It's very exciting. Or I'm a superpower nerd, but it's still exciting. Ha! It yeah, worked all the Look way. Let's see if we can submit it all the way. Um, and now I can't think of any names. Uh, Kyle or not, Sid. Kyleson. Kyle. Kyleson, perfect. I started typing before It's actually you. remarkably hard to think of fake names. I usually try to go through, oh, okay, so this is a bit difficult because I wanted to, I previously was typing and that was easier, but now, was that a design thing or no, it was the same date field, but it was just when if you click into it, it pulls you up the calendar, click into right? it. Yeah, okay. which okay. depending on the age of the kids could be a problem. Yeah, but but that's something we can figure out later. All right, submit. so let's submit this guy and we'll jump over into um, back into our maker experience to look at that data. Great. Um, Oh yeah, so one thing I wanted to quickly touch on too in customer voice. So there's a few things for transparency for our audience, you know, as we're learning right alongside of you, we were submitting this data and we're like, where is it going? What's happening? So we did have to, you know, review, we didn't set up sales in our environment. So there is an app that you can install to make sure that that shows up in your environment, <clears throat> which we did. And we also needed to make sure that our surveys were created in the right environment. So you see we have some created in our default environment and others that are created in our Power Baseball League environment. But the thing we found that's really cool is you can actually copy these surveys and at that time you can choose other locations. So you can move them into the correct environment if you need to. I don't know who would possibly create them in the default environment. I, everything we've done for this, I have done in the wrong environment the first time. <laughs> So yeah, so then we come over here to our entities and we're like, yep, it's supposed to be in CDS. I'm in the right environment. Let's find it, right? And we search for our response and we don't see it here. Mm. But what you'll notice is by default, when we look at our entities, we're only seeing this default list of entities and who knows what that means, but we wanna look at all of our entities. So now when we search for response, then we're seeing these um, survey responses. So that's just what we need. So let's jump in here to this guy and our data, and we'll be able to see our response that we just put in today. So let's open that guy up. 
um, what I want to do. And then we'll be what able to see. That? So this is our survey. And I think this is at the survey level. So we want to look at our responses. So let's jump down here. We can see the two we looked at. We'll open up the one from today. And you can actually see here. There we go. And you'll see, oh. we can see all of the survey information right there. And I think this all also comes mm -hmm. in as records, right? So, yeah. so we'll be able to um, actually grab that data right within CDS and do stuff with it, figure out where it should go. So I think that's where we now need, now we know, now we know where the CDS environment is. Now we can start to look at building out that flow, right? And if you, again, if you recall back to the conversation with Megan, one of the things she said is it's, it's one thing to build the form that's kind of straightforward. I mean, you just have to think through logically where it really gets interesting is getting into how does Power Automate pick that up and move it over and put it in the right environment and, and all that good stuff, which is uh, where we need to go next. And I'm frankly a little overwhelmed with that, but we're learning too. So we'll learn as we go. And maybe we'll need to um, reach out to some other special guest who could maybe help us along the way. Yeah, I hope so. We have a lot of friends, so we need to get them all involved in, in our projects. Kylie all has a lot of friends. Them. Kylie has a lot of friends. I just come along for the ride. <laughs> I've volunteered you to be my friend. I volunteered yeah. all of them to be my friends. <laughs> <laughs> but we've made a lot of progress. We found the data and it's in CDS and it's in a format that we can use. So next week we'll start diving into doing stuff with it. So thanks everyone. Bye.